brilliant. My one-word review of Tom Holland's whirlwind trek across church history is brilliant. Tom Holland, coming from the perspective of a secularist who has rejected Christianity, gives us an insightful, informative, and engaging overview of the history of the church. And he shows how Christianity is the most influential force in the history of the world in his book, Dominion. Nothing has changed society, especially for the better, than Christianity. By starting in Athens 480 years before the birth of Christ and traveling all the way to the woke movement of today, Tom Holland shows that our Western world is not post-Christianity, but Christianity is still the dominant movement, not only in the West, but even in societies that wholly reject the church. Christianity has changed everything about our world. What Tom Holland shows is that our world is not a secular one that has abandoned the church and Jesus Christ, but that what we often see as secular is truly Christian. Why do we care for those who suffer in society? Why do we set up programs to care for the needy? Christianity. The world knew nothing of the charities that we take for granted today before the church. Why do we see slavery as evil? It started because a bunch of Quakers believed it was an opposition to the teachings of Jesus Christ. And with a hundred years of the beginning of their movement, Christian abolitionists were forcing abolition on people around the globe who couldn't have comprehended a world free of slavery before this movement which began in the church. Why do we know that the world is a globe? Why do we know the world is round and we have unlocked thousands of mysteries in the heavens? It's because of Christianity. Even the greatest adversary of the church today in America, which is atheism, why was atheism given room to advance and become a growing option in our culture? It's because Christianity put to death the old views of gods who randomly dictated the world with their passing pleasures and whims. As long as we live in a culture and a society where those who suffer are shown compassion, where slavery is seen as a sin, when sexual abuses are seen as evil, and dignity is given to every person made in the image of God, we are still living in a world that has been predominantly shaped by Christianity. A world apart from Christianity is cruel, callous, and horrific. And one thing that Tom emphasized throughout this, this lengthy book, and at least it was an emphasis for me, and that is the church has always been under regular and consistent reformation throughout her years. In generation after generation, men have risen to power in the church, and they have abused the church for their own selfish gains, but the church kept coming back to its roots of faith in Jesus Christ and love for one another. So while, yes, men in the church have done awful things, and Tom never whitewashed them, he never ignored them, why would he since he's not writing this work as an insider in the church? But he was also quick to point out how those actors inside of Christianity were not following the teachings of Jesus Christ or the Apostle Paul, but they were twisting the dominion of Christianity for purposes outside of the church. And one thing I appreciate about Tom Holland is that he clearly took his time to really dive into the source material, to really unearth what the men and women throughout church history saw and believed and taught in their own days, instead of just simply putting his own 21st century spin upon the various stages of church history. A surprising moment for me in the book was how Tom rightly pointed out that the early church fathers, they had a very earthly view of Christianity. And what I mean by that is they had a view of a hope and an anticipation for Jesus Christ to return to this earth, to establish a kingdom in this world that would be physical and real amongst the nations of the world. And it wasn't until the time of Augustine, and when more like him became influenced by Plato more than the scriptures, that the church began to take on an immaterial view of Christianity, more of a spiritual view of our faith that was 
in many ways divorced from this physical world, and the spiritual became more important than the physical in the church. But for Christ, for Paul, for the early church fathers, the physical was never less important than the spiritual, but they were equally important in the eternal plans of God. Tom also pointed out the darkest moment of the, church, of the history of the church occurred at a date when I would have never guessed because I wasn't even aware that this was when it started. But the darkest turning moment in the church occurred in the year 1231. This was when Pope Gregory IX authorized for the first time not just the preaching against heresy, but the searching out of and the persecution of heresy. So 1231 saw the beginning of the first Inquisito, which was the burning of an untold number of heretics in Germany by Conrad, the first Inquisitor. And this really became the darkest period of church history, where instead of spreading Christ's love and Christ's compassion, all too often the church became an instrument of destruction or cruelty or death upon those who opposed God's plans. His writings on the role of women in the Church of the Middle Ages was enlightening in that at times in some ways it was better than what we see today in the modern world with the way that women are treated as they were cherished, but at the same time it was also far worse in other ways as women were regularly seen as being inferior than men, which goes against Paul's own writings. I loved his description of the church before the days of Martin Luther. Tom wrote, for centuries in the garden of Christendom, flowers had been pulled up as weeds, and weeds tended as flowers. Now those are just a few brief moments that really stood out for me in this excellent work on the history of the church. But the one part of the book that kind of frustrated me was how starting with the chapter that was entitled Religion, beginning in the year 1825, Tom Holland began to spend almost all of his time not tracking the actions and the writings and the movements of those who are inside the church. So starting at that point, I wanted Tom Holland to write about men like J.N. Darby, Spurgeon, J. Gresham Machen, Karl Barth, and Billy Graham. And for the most part, those pivotal figures aren't even mentioned in the book. I think Graham may get a passing mention, but I couldn't find it when I went back to look for it in the book. Instead, starting at that period, Holland spends his time talking about those who are outside of the church, those who were the greatest adversaries of the church, people like Karl Marx, and how even the church's greatest adversaries have been fundamentally influenced by the church and the ethics of Christianity. An example from this section reads, in 1863, barely 20 years after the Sultan of Morocco had declared slavery an institution approved since the dawn of time, the mayor of Tunis wrote a letter to the American Consul General citing justification drawn from Islamic scripture for its abolition. So in other words, until the influence of the church, Islam could not imagine a world where slavery was not just an institution, but one that was approved and established by Allah himself. But because of Christianity, all of a sudden, they are writing about how they can find in Islamic writings that abolition is the correct path. So what Tom does in the last several chapters is he doesn't necessarily look at the dominion of the church itself. But how all of this world, even Christianity's greatest enemies, have been fundamentally led in their world view, in the way that they see man, science, religion, politics, and more from a distinctly Christian perspective. It's really fascinating to see how he builds this argument that a lot of views and presuppositions that we see as secular, that we see as, as not part of Christianity, Tom proves how it's really part of the influence of the dominion of the church. Now, I know it's a lot to recommend the book Dominion because it's, it's a it's a big book. It's, it's, it's hard to say. I'm going to tackle reading through this book. But I want to say first, I think this is a book that every single pastor should read through from beginning to end. 
All of us who are leading churches, we should know how our faith has impacted the world in which we serve. So if you're a pastor, I think Dominion should be a must read. I also think anybody who enjoys reading history in general would find great joy in reading through Dominion. It is a wonderful historical read. And if you're someone who loves the church, you should pick up a copy of Dominion. Even if you don't plan on reading it from beginning to end, I think it's a great reference work so that if you're learning or, or reading about a time period in church history, you can say, well, let me go back to that era and see what Tom has to say about it and see how he contributed to that period of the church's history. So Dominion, this is, this is a really unique and important work. It is a history of the church that I would say is... It is honest, forthright, and fair from someone who is not a member of the church. And those don't come along every day. I can't think of another one that we have that is out there on the market available. And so don't pass up Dominion. Grab a copy of Tom Holland's book to see the impact of the Christian faith and ethics upon the world. And if you enjoyed this review and you want to stay engaged in the insightful world of Christian literature, I'd encourage you to subscribe to the Rev Reads YouTube channel.